If there's a long line like this in Asia, it's got to be pretty good. Hello from Seoul, Korea, the country's capital with fantastic shopping and some of the most amazing food known to mankind in every street, alley and corner of the city. Now no trip to Seoul is complete until you visit at least one major night market. So tonight we are at Gwangjang Night Market and we're going to be eating as many popular Korean street foods as we can and sharing that with you in this video. So if you love the street food scene and you're longing to visit Korea, come along and stick with me until the very end. Let's do this! So as you make your way into the Guangzhou Night Market, one of the first things you're going to see if you watch popular Netflix street food show, this is the stall where famous celebrities on YouTube have filmed their edits. There it is. There we go. Hi. <laughs> so depending on the time of day, there's actually quite a few stalls that are actually already closed. It looks kind of dead when you first come in through the main entrance, but as you make your way deeper into the night market, it becomes much more lively. I think this is where all the locals and tourists alike, like myself, are actually coming to get their fair share of street food. So there's a lot to eat. You can see there's different stalls. This night market actually splits into four different alleys. So there's the main center hub where everything interconnects. There's tons of different options to eat. It looks like a lot of them serve the same things. There's like pakpaki, dumplings. Wow. And so we came across a stall here where there's actually a live octopus tank. So I may have to sit down and try some of that in a bit. I've always wanted an octopus leg to crawl around my mouth. <laughs> so many of the stalls appears to be selling the same types of cuisines. Ranges from blood sausage, kimbap, some dumplings. So we're just going to find an open seat somewhere and order our first few items. Alright, so we finally just got seated. I mean, we're right in the middle of all the action. We can see all the good food. So we're just going to go order a few items and try it all out. Oh, thank you. Oh, that bench completely cleared out. I bet you a bunch of people are going to sit down here in just a moment though. Oh, wow, those look big and puffy. They serve the items up quick. As you can see, most of it's already ready to go. They just have to season it with some sauce and put it on a plate for you. It's very good though. Can you dip it in that sauce right here? Okay. Mmm, a little bit, little bit tart, a little bit sour. I think that's the sauce is what gives it that, that vinaigrette type. It's just like a salad dressing. So what kimbap is, is just rice wrapped around strips of carrot and daikon and some seaweed and it gives you this dipping sauce. It's like a vinaigrette sauce. Pretty good. I don't think there's any meat in it though. Mm. In all honesty, it's like a California roll without the imitation crab. And like I said, that bench got filled up very quickly. It was only empty for a split second. All right, so we're digging into the takpaki next. These are some of the biggest rice cakes I've ever seen. Most of the ones I've had are like just, just like a third of the size here. Ooh, that looks hot and steamy. Gotta be careful. You put the whole thing in your mouth? <laughs> so my wife made the mistake of putting the whole thing in her mouth and if you look closely at this hot bucky piece, it's actually steaming hot, piping hot, so I can't leave her hanging, I gotta do the same thing. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that's chewy. Mmm. Very sweet. A little bit spicy. Not as spicy as some of the other ones I've had though. Mmm. Cool. That's like a, a jaw exercise. You can see my jaw muscles kind of like flexing. Mm. I feel like these two pieces of tapaki is just like the equivalent of a whole little cup that I would buy at another night market. You definitely need something to drink. Because that, that chili paste that they smother that tapaki in, wow, they're like stuck to my teeth right now. All right, we're going back to the gimbap here. The one, not every piece has this special leaf here. This is a Korean herby type vegetable and it's got a really interesting taste in that. It leaves a flavor of like toothpaste in your mouth, but it's really, really good. I eat it typically with Korean barbecue back in the States, all right? Yeah, with the leaf it actually better. Yeah, I wish every piece had that. Kind of balances out that tartness. All right, so that was actually pretty good. I like that kimbap. The takbaki was really good too, but it was just too big and a little bit too chewy for my taste. Like it actually gives you, like I said, a really good jaw workout. I feel a little bit bad because we left two pieces of that takbaki left over there, but it's okay. We're here to sample everything, not to get completely full. 
this is a great place for people to come eat, socialize, have some alcohol like soju or Korean beer. Yeah, this is a great place to come after a long day of hard work. Or if you're a tourist and you know you're hungry and you're not you can't fall asleep, come over here and check out all the good different food options. Now I'm a tourist like many people here, but what I like about this market so far, I went to Myeongdong Night Market the other day and it was just filled with too many tourists and the prices were really, really expensive. What I'm liking about this so far is it actually feels like there's a lot more locals here. It feels like it's more of a traditional night market that is unique and special through Korea. So we are taking ourselves away from that center hub um, and just kind of branching out to one of the different alleys. And uh, again, most of the options appear to be very, very similar. As we were making our way down the alley, we saw a long queue for this particular stall and I think what they sell is mung bean pancakes. Just following the crowd and we're gonna wait. So they turn these things out so fast that they're having to stack them on a separate tray across their stall. These things look like giant hash browns, so I'm not sure how you're supposed to eat these, but they look very, very good. All right, so we just got our single portion of mung bean pancakes. It looks very, very good. They actually give you a sauce with it too, right? Yeah. It was fresh and crispy, like a giant hash brown, like I said. <laughs> it's, it's very, very oily, and they don't give you any utensils, so you kind of have to just dig into it with your hands, I guess. Well, it's not too bad. Okay. Yeah, you get the right spot. It is steaming hot still in the innards. There we go. Mmm. Pretty plain, though, without the sauce. Mm. Very crispy. Very tender on the inside, just like a hash brown, like I said, but I'm gonna try, the flavor is a little bit bland for me, so I actually gotta add some additional sauce to it. All right, so we're adding a lot more of that sauce because, again, I think that's what makes the dish itself, right? It needs to have some additional flavoring, so I'm gonna go for this one. We kind of drenched that a little bit with that marinade. Hopefully this bite is a little bit more pleasing on the palate. All right, got a much bigger piece with all that marinade. I'll try it out. Mmm, mmm, I'm burning my finger, but it's good. It's much more sweet and tart. Mmm. Some bean sprouts and green onions in there too. Make sure you pack plenty of napkins when you come to this market. Mm. What's nice about being here is the air, the cold air and the cool brisk breeze is blowing right in through from the streets. So it's like you're eating hot food and cold weather is just like completes the whole experience. Imagine doing this in hot humid weather because it does get pretty hot and humid in Korea apparently. So behind me appears to be a tour group. I guess this night market is quite popular that tours actually come here as well, like tour groups specifically as part of a package that you would pay for when visiting Korea. Now the vibe of this market actually reminds me of the different alleys of Tokyo, Japan, like Shinjuku. If you've ever been visited there, you sit alongside next to strangers, elbow to elbow, and you eat and you move on to the next stop. So we're stumbling upon another stall that has a long, long line. So we're assuming this is something we need to try as well. Not quite sure what it is, so I'm making my way up to the front to take a peek before we uh, wait in line over here. So. so we asked some questions. I don't exactly know what we're waiting in line for, but my wife and I, we have pretty adventurous palate. We're going to give it a shot either way. It looks, If there's a long line like this in Asia, it's got to be pretty good. So the reason why the line takes so long is because there's only one lady cooking all of this batch up for this long line of people. You know, it's worth the wait. The people behind me told me what it is. It's actually glutinous rice with some sugar-filled filling. It literally is a one-woman show over here. Yeah, very, very popular. Yeah. 1,500. So 1,500 Korean won for the sugar-filled sticky rice griddle cake. Okay, thank you. All right, here we go, guys. Hey, take care. Take care. Good talking to you. Okay, this griddle cake comes piping hot and they put it in this little cup too so you're not burning your fingers. So we're gonna let this cool down because I think this will burn your palate. Mmm, mmm, a little bit chewy on the inside, like gooey actually. It's like a giant fried donut, like a beignet, but a little bit gooey on the inside. I'm not sure how it would actually taste with the different fillings. I'm not sure what mugwort is, but I do believe the sugar filled filling is actually the best option to go with. They had another option that actually was vegetable filled, which is definitely more on the savory side. Mmm, very good. 
just a fried donut. The glazed caramel syrup that they rub on top of it. Mm. That's right, really good. So if you're not super hungry, if you had your dinner already and you're eating your way through this night market and you have patience, definitely wait in that line for some of this. Mmm. All right, so we were waiting in that line for the griddle cake for so long that our appetites actually came back. So uh, we actually decided to sit in this main center of the night market and we ordered some japchae and some fish cake uh, with seaweed soup. So it's actually something that's going to help fulfill our hunger as we're waiting in that line. All right, there's the japchae right there. Try to get all, a little bit of the green onions, the carrot, along with the noodles. Mm. That was really good. It actually doesn't really have that strong of a sesame flavor that I'm used to, but pretty light overall. Mm. All right, then we got this seaweed fish cake soup here. That's all they put in it. So it looks actually very, very simple. Probably gonna taste a little bit like miso soup. Mm. Not like miso soup, just a little bit savory, salty. Definitely taste some machine in that. <laughs> mm. good. Not as bouncy. Kind of just dissolves in your mouth a little bit. Mm. And so it's actually close to about 11 p.m. here on a Saturday night. And so most of the food stalls are actually wrapping up, putting the food away. A lot of the customers are finishing up their meals. I believe the market actually closes at 11 p.m. specifically. In terms of recommendations, come here on a full stomach so that you're not hungry, waiting in line for some of the more popular items. For that griddle cake, we actually waited for about 45 minutes just for that one piece. And there's just something about eating in an environment like this that makes the whole experience, right? It's a little bit dirty, <laughs> not the cleanliest of environments. You're sitting elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder with random strangers, potentially making conversations depending on the person. And it's really, really cool. It's part of the whole experience, right? I personally enjoy that more than fine dining. If you're ever visiting Korea, I would say this is probably the number one night market to come to. So if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, click the like button. If you want to follow us on our food and travel journey, subscribe to my channel. If you're ever visiting Seoul, Korea, definitely come to Gwangjang Night Market. I would highly recommend it to anybody. If you're a street food lover, you won't be disappointed. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Take care and have a good night. Bye-bye.